Welcome back, Tigers. This is the next video in our Salesforce forecasting series. In this video, you'll learn how to stop juggling those annoying spreadsheets outside of Salesforce and start using the forecast tab to make adjustments and easily see which opportunities are counting towards your forecast. Let's go dive in and make your forecast review meetings run more efficiently. All right, here we are in Salesforce and our first step is to go into setup. We're gonna to go to forecast settings, And then we'll scroll down and we'll click edit next to enable adjustments and judgments. Now you can enable manager adjustments and owner adjustments. This means that you're going to give the manager or owner the ability to adjust the forecast number and provide comments as to why you're adjusting the forecast. Then we're going to determine if we want to show the adjustments as a hover over or if we want a column that shows the number in the comments for those adjustments. And then this checkbox allows you to indicate if you want to use manager judgments. This is going to give you a column on your opportunity list that allows the manager to indicate whether or not an opportunity is in or out of the forecast. So you don't have to enable both. If you just want to use adjustments and not judgments, you can. Now I'm going to enable columns so that you can see what that looks like. When we choose columns, absolutely nothing's going to happen here. So I'll click save. And then we'll scroll down and we'll go back into edit. And then we should see columns right here. Here's where you can adjust the name of the column. We're going to say that we want this to be the commit forecast with adjustments. And then we're going to call this the commit forecast. Actually, let's make this shorter and just make it commit with adjustments. So it takes up less room. And then this one's going to be best case adjustments. And then this one will be our best case. Okay. So that's what the names of the columns will show. And then here for the judgment values, you can also change those too. You don't have to have in or out. Uh, so if you want it to be something else, you can change that here and then that's it. So we'll come up here and we'll click save. And that's all you need to do to enable both of these features. All right, the next thing you need to do is make sure that the manager judgment field is in the forecast type that you wanna use. Come to your forecast type, you'll click the drop down arrow, click edit opportunity list, and just make sure you see this field called manager judgment in the visible fields over here on the right hand side. This will give the managers the ability to edit this field from the opportunity list on the forecast tab. All right, our next step is we have to give our users permissions to override forecasts. So whether you're using profiles or permission sets, you'll need to navigate there. And then you'll need to enable the override forecast permission. Just make sure the users that are going to use the manager adjustments and judgments have that permission. All right, now we're going to log in as a manager and we're going to see what all this looks like. So I'm logged in as Nate Panther and I'm going to go to the forecast tab and then I'm going to adjust this so I can see my first quarter here. Now I can see I have a couple of columns. I can see I have a commit column, a commit with adjustments. I have a best case column and a best case with adjustments. I can come in here and adjust the forecast for any of my sales reps. So you can see I get a pencil whenever I hover over any of my team members forecasts in the commit with adjustments column or in the best case with adjustments column. If something's going on here with one of Roger War's deals, I can say, I think this commit is actually going to be 305,000. And then we can say company is going through an acquisition, which is delaying deal. And you can put whatever notes that you need in here for the forecast meeting so you can communicate all of that to the senior leaders. So we'll click save there. And then what you'll see is that there's a little orange triangle that shows that the forecast number was adjusted. So we can hover over here, we can see the note. If we have this collapsed, we can see that the forecast was indeed adjusted because it has a note there. So that's as simple as that. That's how the adjustments work. Now I'm going to make another adjustment over here on Mina's forecast. We're going to adjust it up. We'll say company growth is on an upward trend. 
And of course, you want to put the actual names of the companies in your notes so that you can be super prepared for your forecast review meetings. So now we can see in here our little note, how we adjusted it up. We increased it by $100,000 and we have the reason why there. Now let's take a look at how to work with manager judgments. So if we scroll down a little bit, you can see that we have a manager judgment column. Now we can see we have a pencil icon for these three opportunities, but this one's locked. And that's because Nate Panther is the opportunity owner. Opportunity owners cannot set the manager judgment field for their own opportunities. This is a field for your manager to set so that they can be in control over what they're submitting for the forecast. So they can update this field to be in for these three opportunities all at once. And then those will show in the forecast. Now, if we come over here, let's go ahead and select this cell right here. We can see that none of these have been updated to have a manager judgment. I'm going to go to Mina's opportunities and I'm going to update all three of these to be in. Then I'll scroll down and click save. And then we'll scroll back over and then the ones that I just updated to be in the forecast were these right here. So we'll click there and just make sure that that's stuck. We hover over our, our columns. We can see that the total in plus one is 193. So this is adding up all of the opportunities that have been marked to be considered in the forecast plus everything that's one. So it's taking that 193 number for all the opportunities that we marked as in. If we take this one and we mark it as out, that number should go down to 183. So we'll just update that one. And then we'll refresh and then we'll scroll over here. We should have over here and we see, yep, it went down to 183. So that's how the manager judgments work. Now let's go check out how we can pull reports on the manager adjustments and the judgments. All right, let's log out as Nate Panther. And then we're gonna go to our report types. And then you should have a forecasting quotas with forecasting quota items report type. If you don't have this yet from one of our previous videos, I'll put the link in the description below so you can learn how to create that report type. That is the one that we'll be using. So we'll come over here to our reports tab and then we'll click new report and then we'll select all and we're looking for forecasting quotas with forecasting quota items. Now we're going to add our columns and update our filters. Let's save and run this. All right, so let's scroll down to Nate and Mina where we know we had adjustments made. Okay, so here's Mina's forecast. Now it looks like everything's duplicated here and that's because it is. So let's see what's going on here. So we're gonna add another field. We're gonna add our forecasting type API name. And we can see that we have two different forecasting types. So that's one problem that we have. And let's go down and look at Mina. So we have more than one forecasting type. And then we can see we have one record for each item in the forecasting item category. Now, this is how this type of report works. A forecasting item object in your report is going to give you one record for each of these. Now, the reason why it's being duplicated is because this is showing your pipeline only and your best case only, and then this is showing your open pipeline. So if we look at the forecast category definition in the API documentation that we have from Salesforce here, we can see that open pipeline is a roll up of everything that's open. So it's going to add up opportunities for multiple forecast categories. So 15 plus eight is 23. Our best case forecast is going to roll up everything that's best case and higher best case plus commit plus closed. So that is going to show 
8,000 here, and that is correct. And then the custom category, I'm not sure what this is. In the documentation, it says it's because you have a custom forecast category, but we don't. So it looks like it's the same value as the open pipeline. So we need to filter out some of this information so that it's not duplicated in our report. We need to filter for our forecast type, so we'll do that. And then we'll also filter for our forecast item category. I'm also gonna add a filter for Mina so that we can just look at her forecast so it'll be easier to understand what's happening. And then the reason why I'm using a filter on the forecasting item category and not a filter on the forecast category is because we will lose the ability to see our adjustments if we filter on the forecast category. You can see if I look for forecast category to have a value, those records are gonna be wiped from my report. So depending on what you're looking for, since the intent of this report is to see adjustments, we actually need to filter for these three values in our forecasting item category field. So yours might be a little bit different depending on the names of your forecast categories. So what you're looking for is just to select all the rollups. Then we'll save and run this. All right, this looks much better. So we don't have things duplicated anymore and we can see our forecast amount and we can see our amount without our adjustment. Oh, it looks like we're missing, uh, oh yeah, it didn't select our best case. That's where our adjustment is. I'm like, where's our adjustment? Okay, let's collapse that back down. All right, perfect. So here's our adjustment and we can see, yes, we added 100,000 to our forecast amount for Mina. Now let's go ahead and look at Roger. Okay, here's Roger's adjustment right here. We adjusted it down $20,000. So that will allow us to see that in this report. Okay, next we're gonna work on our reporting for our manager judgments. Now we need to create a custom report type for that. So we're gonna go back here into setup. We'll go to report types and we're gonna click new custom report type. Our primary object is going to be forecasting items. And our label is gonna be forecasting items with opportunities with judgments. We ran out of characters there. Uh, we have a nice description where we're gonna say, use this report type. If you want to report on forecasting items with their related opportunities and their manager judgments, we're gonna store this in our forecast category in our folder. And then we'll set this to deployed and I'll click next. Now our second object that we're going to select here is opportunities. And then our third object that we're gonna select here is our forecasting source record judgments. So that's actually the object that contains the data around your manager judgments. It's not a field on the opportunity. Now we're going to set this to say B records may or may not have related C records. Just in case there's no record judgments, we want the data to come into our report so that we can make sure our managers update the manager judgments for all opportunities. So we'll click save there. Now we're gonna create a new report. We're gonna go to our reports tab and we'll click new report and we're gonna choose the report type that we just created and that is this one right here. We'll click start report, All right? So we're gonna group this by our judgment value. Now, the all these fields are spelled wrong. They're all missing the E's, just so that you're aware. I think judgment's spelled with an E. All right, and we'll add some columns here. Now you can also add in the judgment owner so that you know who made the judgment. And then you can also add the date here. So if we go underneath the forecasting source record judgments, we can add in the created date and the last modified date. So we know the last time they made a modification. Okay, let's save and run this. And this is our manager judgment reporting versus our pipeline. Okay, we can see here that we don't have any judgments. Uh, this is just showing my forecasting items. So let's set this to all. 
Okay, perfect. Now we can see a couple that are in or out. So these should actually be Nate's. So let's go ahead and edit this so that we can see who made the manager judgments. So let's go ahead and group by our owner name. So now we have a really nice snapshot of who has updated their opportunities to be in or out of the forecast and who still needs to update some of their opportunities. So we can see that most of our managers have not updated the judgment value, which is fine. And these are the ones that are totally counting. Now this report out of the box doesn't give you the ability to identify which opportunity owners managers need to update the judgment values. Uh, that is something that you would have to do custom. Let me know if you're interested in that. All right, we're all set. That's how you do the reporting for your manager judgments and your manager adjustments. That's it. That's a wrap. Be sure to subscribe to Blue Tiger Academy so you don't miss out on our next video that will show you how to automate the updates to the manager field and forecasts. If your team has lots of opportunities, it is very time consuming for your managers to update this field for every new opportunity. Let us know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you'd like to see a video on a different Salesforce topic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.